put at your, I cannot talk today. I don't know what is wrong with me. I just got done um, recording a video that is for a Christmas um, holiday like seminar. And so it's in the future, but we have to do a lot of planning now. And there'll definitely be some more details about that coming out. But I am so tongue tied today. And so I it's crazy because I have got like Christmas projects, fall projects, summer projects ending, Halloween projects. It's like all the holidays jumbled up into one right now. And so um, it's a little crazy. And so filming today all day, those videos um, has been <laughs> getting me all tongue tied. So I'm sorry if I like jumble up jargon up my words tonight. Um, but I was excited because I've been wanting to make this project and I've been wanting to share it with you guys. It's a cute little door hanger that you can put at your front door. I like to put mine on the inside because I get to enjoy it. Um, it's not technically a wreath. Um, I don't put wreaths outside. I put them on the inside because I like to enjoy them, right? And I don't want frogs in Florida. I don't want frogs jumping in them. Um, so this is a door hanger, but it's kind of made to go inside. And so like for me, on my front entryway, we have a board and batten wall that has some hooks on it. And so I plan to hang this on the board and batten wall um, there because it just greets people as they come in and it's one of my favorite places to look at and it, that I also decorate with the seasons. And so this is gonna be a cute little door hanger to hang there. And it is a kit that is going to be available in the shop. Um, so this is the first fall one that I'm going to put up in the shop for um, making these things at home. So you can actually order this kit and get it um, shipped to you. And it's going to come with the stencil and everything that you need um, for this. Now it's a fall looking piece, but it just says welcome y'all on it. So you can technically do this kit with any colors that you want and any kind of embellishments that you want to make it year round or to make it fall specific. It's totally up to you. Today, I'm going to be making it fall specific. So, um, to get started, what you will have is this little round wooden um, piece. And it's like a, it's a, it's a board. It's kind of like a heavy, um, not a chip board, because it's actually wood. So it's, it's great. And this is very similar to the craft that we did for um, summer. I did a craft kit that mailed out and um, it, this is like the similar round piece. If you're familiar with the craft kit that I did um, in the summer, then this is similar to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to break my board or my round um, into two colors into two sections and just kind of have like a line separating the two and to do that I'm just using some painters tape but you can certainly use any kind of craft tape that you have masking tape um, even washi tape if you have that kind of tape as well so I'm just going to um, basically just make sure I get a piece that's long enough um, to basically you know, go across my board. And then you can put this right in the middle or you can actually do it a little bit down. And so I'm gonna do it in the lower half or the lower third, if that makes sense. Um, because I just, I don't know, I want it to have some interest. And so this comes, just so you know, it comes pre-drilled with the holes in it so that you can actually add beads to make the hanger. So I'm gonna make sure that that is straight and lined up before I lay down my tape. And I'm going to 
um, just make sure that I've got like the amount of area that I want painted right there. And then I'm going to lay this down like this. And I actually have some craft paper on my um, table here. And so that's what I recommend. It's just best, easy cleanup, that sort of thing. And then, um, you know, if it peels it up, it's totally fine. But now my little board is secure to my, to my work spot. So the color I'm going to be doing on the bottom is this orange color from Waverly. It is called Pumpkin, which is perfect for fall. This is a great color to have for fall. And to paint this um, little board, um, I actually have a tray here from a Christmas kit that I was making earlier, but I'm gonna pour some out into these little trays that I have right here. And I'm just going to paint the bottom section of my board in this pretty, pumpkin color and so I just want to kind of go with the grain and go downward in this downward motion and just kind of paint that onto my board and this is really easy this is kind of fun too because like I said you can do this for any um, the words on this one you could do for any season but I'm going to be making this one for fall the other thing that I wanted to share with you guys tonight is that if you're in my local area, there is a um, shop in Winter Haven that primarily does like sewing classes, but she also has like other kinds of crafts and different kinds of classes that she offers in her back room with all different kinds of instructors. And she's asked me to teach um, one of these craft kit classes. So I have made the link in this um, DIY, in this live, um, available to you where you can check out the details of that craft kit that we are going to be doing and it's for a specific date and time it won't be shipped um, if you want it to be shipped to you then um, you'll have to wait until it's offered on the website for shipping but this is for this class specifically um, in Winter Haven where I live in Florida and you can actually um, get this um, class where you can make a kit with me and I will be there live in person to um, talk you through every step of the way. And by the end of it, you'll walk out of there with a beautiful sign that you can display for fall and have in your home for all the fall things. So um, definitely check that out. If you're on my Facebook page and you actually follow it or are a fan, then um, you'll see it linked in my event, events and you can totally get um, the details there for the upcoming events. Okay, so look, that bottom portion is completely done. It's all filled out or it's all painted. And so what I'm gonna do is just kind of give it a minute to kind of dry, just kind of fan it a little bit. Um, just to kind of help it because I don't wanna lift the tape off um, too early and like how it risk it smearing. Um, hopefully I laid the tape down enough to where I didn't have any bleed, but sometimes that happens, so no big deal. Um, if it does, we'll totally fix it in the next portion. And then once it looks pretty dry, and that's what I love about the chalk paint, it dries like so much faster than normal acrylic paint. And um, acrylic paint like kind of like soaks into the material and the chalk paint, for some reason, like when you work with it, it actually just, I don't know, it like immediately sticks to the surface, like to the top and it dries so good. So um, I don't know, Waverly chalk paint is like my favorite craft paint to use for most of my projects. So if you're gonna, it is a little bit more expensive than like your average apple barrel or your craft paint, like your acrylic paints, but um, I just like the way it, it works. So, you know, it's, it's totally worth it, I promise. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is just peel up my tape here, okay? And I'm gonna stick that to the side. And you can see here what I have now is this perfectly straight line of um, orange. So, and, and you can kind of like flap this, like flap it dry a little bit if you know you think that will help it. I don't know, I think it will. And then what I'm gonna do is use this water-based wax, um, which is also Waverly Chalk Paint brand, but it's not the chalk paint, it's the wax. And I talk about this um, 
color specifically all the time. This color is antique. It comes in the wax and this actually acts like a stain, um, but it's a paint that's a wax. I know that's kind of confusing, but um, what I like about it is it just, it acts like a nice stain for wood projects specifically, and I love the look that it gives. So what I'm going to do is just basically take my little brush and stick it in there, and I have a pretty good amount on here. I don't know if you can see, and I don't want that much. So I'm gonna like wipe it off like that, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from the bottom and work my way up since I don't have my craft tape up there. I don't wanna like bleed into my orange. So I'm going to like stroke this down, kind of going with the grain of the wood just to kind of um, help this out a little bit. And then I'm going to brush it in with my sponge to kind of get the stained color. And you can kind of see how I'm doing that. Like you only need a little bit and it might kind of help if I just kind of run this down a little bit. Um, one other thing that you can do too with this color is you can um, actually put some water in it to help it um, be more of like a stain if that's easier for you to work with. So I'm just kind of brushing this on there and getting the color kind of splotched around. And then what I'm gonna do is pull out a sponge that I have, I just have another one right here. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of work the stain into the wood or work the wax into the wood. So I'm getting that stained Look, I'm not really getting a brown paint. I'm getting a stained look. And I'm kind of going with the grain here because remember, that's the look that we want for the top portion of this little door hanger. I want the stained wood look, but I'm using a craft paint to get it. And I'm just kind of smearing it there, making sure that I don't get um, too, too much, okay? And then I'm just gonna kinda go back again where it didn't get too much paint. And then I'm gonna do it again right here at my line. And then just take that sponge again and rub it to the line. Of orange paint. Okay, probably just need a little bit more. And again, I'm just wiping off all the excess. And then I'm just kind of going right here. And so before I finish this, you can see here, right there, I kind of have like that little spot that doesn't quite touch the orange. What I'm going to do is put my paint back, my tape back down on the orange, making sure I line it up perfectly, and then really push that down onto the orange to try to avoid any seepage, because I want to keep that line as crisp as possible. And then I'm gonna go back with my little brush right up to the edge of that spot. Not on it, but just right up to the edge of it. You can see, I didn't quite go onto it. And then again, I'm just gonna take my sponge and do this whole rubbing in method right here, just to kind of smear it in to the line to fill it in. And then I have this beautiful upper section of the round that looks like it's been stained and it's almost completely dry, which is like the best thing I think since sliced bread. I don't know, maybe not. But for when it comes to like painting two tones on wood, especially if you're doing like the stained look and then like a painted look, this is like the easiest thing to do. And you can kind of see my brush strokes in there a little bit and that's totally fine. You could go back with some more and to kind of even it out a little bit if you see that. 
um, just to kind of like bring it all together. But I kind of like the look of it, especially when you can see the little bitty grains of this little wood round. My sponge is kind of falling apart on me because I pushed it. But see, so that's what we have right now as part of it. And it's pretty dry for the most part. Like we can go ahead and move on to the second or the third step of making this piece. So I'm just gonna fan it a little bit just to kind of give it a little bit of extra air. You see? Yeah. And then what I'm gonna do is get the stencil that comes with this kit. And this one says, welcome y'all. And it has some hearts on it. You can totally um, not use the hearts if you don't want the hearts or you can use them if you want to. I think I'm going to be using them because I just think it's adorable and why not? And then what I'm going to do is, let me put that to the side a little bit. I'm gonna peel off the backing of my stencil. And then I'm going to put the word welcome in the tan and the wood stain color. And then I'm going to put the y'all in the orange part of it. So I'm going to use the little divider line as my divider line for this stencil. Now again, you totally don't have to do it this way. You can put it in the center. This one I have kind of aligned to the right um, because I want it to look that way. You don't have to do that. You can totally do it whichever way is, you know, your fancy. You can totally customize this little kit um, however you see fit. So what I'm going to do though is I'm just going to put it on there kind of like to the right side like that. And then once I am done, which let me show you just so you can see. Once I'm done with getting it on there, I'm going to peel off the clear um, transfer part of the stencil. So to do that, you'll just want to, let me see if I can show you. I hope you see it lifting, but you'll wanna peel that stenciled part, that piece off, okay? So I'm gonna do that, but I have to kind of lay it down here. Can't really lift it up to do it just to make sure that my stencil kind of stays in place while I do this, because it kind of wants to lift right there. And this is the hardest part right here, like getting the um, stencil topper off. It just, it just is. For me, it is, I think for every single one that I do, there's always like a little piece that just wants to lift up and not lay down. And it's just, you know, you gotta be patient with it every time. For me, it's just the way that these little things work. Um, so, just be patient with it. Because you, the, word, the last thing you wanna do when you're doing a stencil like this is rip the design. You don't wanna rip the stencil material because then you are stuck with, um, you know, with it being kinda messed up on you. So do your best. So I've kind of got a little sticking up right there. I'm just making sure I get these little tiny pieces that are like the insides of the letters. Like they're real teeny tiny. I wanna make sure that they stay laid down in my project where they're supposed to. So if they come up, just lay it back down, no big deal. And I just use this little tool to kind of help me Oh, there's another little one that came up. Keep it all down in place. And 
This one is a strong one today. Totally fine though. Okay. Still going. Almost there. So how is everybody doing? Tonight, are you crafting? Are you going out for tacos? Taco Tuesday? What are you guys all up to? All right, let's see. Can't see the um, comments because I got a little thing right here making sure I got this. I'm just I'm gonna stand up just to kind of get over it because that kind of helps a little bit. It's these little tiny pieces that I just, I'm very patient with because like I said, you don't want to rip the little inserts of the letter because that will mess up the flow of your design and you totally don't want that and it only you know i know like while i'm live it's like and frustrating a little bit because that's like i feel like you're patiently waiting for me um but in reality it's only a few minutes of time to just be patient with it and to get it to stay in place so if you get one of these kits just remember that just be patient with it and it will come. It just, you know, you'd rather have patience than, oops, that came up, than none at all and then it rip on you and then you don't have the, the stencil, okay? So just make sure that you have it where well, you're good. And like, I just kind of did that whole welcome word first and then I um, started down here with the word y'all in the heart, just to kind of get that into place here. So, almost got it completely free. And there's a little sliver here like that. You see that little blue, wait, let me see, my camera's back there. Um, make sure you don't throw that out because that's the inside of one of your letters and you want that little teeny speck to be there. Whoops, I got it upside down. Trust me, I know. You want that little speck to be there. Okay, so that's what it looks like once you have it completely removed. And I have a little bubble here, so let me make sure I press that down. You want your stencil to be completely flat all around the areas that you are going to stencil, okay? So you can use your finger to kind of like rub that into place just to make sure it's all laying down nice and smooth or use a little tool if you want to, whatever you're fancy, okay? So then the next part is to paint the stencil part, whatever color you're going to be painting it. And um, of course, I'm gonna be doing white, Waverly chalk paint white, and I'm going to, um, just pour out a little bit right here. If it will come, this one's kind of near the end of its bottle and it's thick. Might need to add some water to that. And then you're just gonna take your little sponge and you're gonna dab it into your paint. And then like, since I'm working on my table here, I'm just gonna kind of dab it out. Like, can you see? I'm just gonna kind of dab it the excess off because I don't want to blop it onto my sign right away and then, you know, like it's splooge. Actually though, before we paint, I do want to share a quick little tip with you. If you are doing wood painted signs because this will help your stencil design be more preserved, more crisp, and it also will help preserve it a little better. Um, if you have Mod Podge, you don't have to do this step. You can totally skip this step and go right to painting just like I was about to. But if you do have Mod Podge, I highly recommend um, 
Everybody should have this. Anyway, um, getting some of this out and just a little teeny tiny 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 bit. Oh, that was the the brown. <laughs> I just stuck it in there. Anyways, get a little bit on like a little piece of sponge or something and just kind of blab it into the blab it. You like that word? Blob it into where the stencil is, okay? In fact, you can even just use a little tiny bit on your finger like that and just blob it into the stencil and then rub it in, like rub it around. And what this is going to do is sort of create a little layer barrier onto where your stencil part is going to be. You obviously don't want this on the whole project because you want the like finishes of the paint and the wood to be the finish. But this part you do be, want the Mod Podge because it, like I said, it's creating that little layer, that thin little layer of um, like seal, I guess, to the stencil. Especially if you have like any air bubbles, this is gonna kind of help that and give you that more crisp, sharp line like a vinyl would. And certainly you could use a vinyl for this project. Hey, how are you? Um, but you could uh, totally do something else, you know, instead um, with this. So what you wanna do is just make sure you get that thin little layer of Mod Podge in there first, and then it just takes like a few seconds to dry. And once it's dry, you can go ahead and, you know, move on to the painting part, which is the blotching part with your little sponge. So um, that's what it looks like. And you can see where I had the excess Mod Podge right there. I just blobbed it off my finger and then just smeared it into where the stencil is to make it even, even a thinner, lighter coat. And now it's ready and dry. Like to the touch, it's a little bit tacky. So um, after that, it's ready to go, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get back to my paint part. And like I said, I'm just gonna dab the paint into my um, sponge right here and then blob it in out to the side to get off the excess, okay? And then now I'm going to fill in my stencil with the um, paint. So I'm just going, and like before I get into the actual like part that's to be painted, just so you know, like I have this little space over here, I will like test blob it out there to see like, oh, how much is really on my sponge, okay? And so when I'm like, oh, okay, that's a good amount, like it's kind of, you know, whatever, I will go into the stencil part. Make sense? So that way I know that I'm not like overdoing it with the painting of the stencil -y part. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. And then I'm just going to fill in everywhere I have the stencil showing on my wood. And just keep doing this little dabby. Dab. I keep wanting to put it in the Mod Podge. Let me put that away before I, before I, I dip it in the Mod Podge and then it's all over my thing. So what I'm going to do is just go back to my paint, get a little bit more, take the excess off, and then right back into my stencil like this, like that. Thanks. Hi, Tamara. How are you? Uh, hi, Karen. So what I'm going to do is. I actually have something from Southern Adornments that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. I think it's tomorrow. I have a project that I got from her. Um, so I'm excited to share that with you guys. And um, we'll be doing that one, I believe, tomorrow. Hopefully sooner than later, though. Like on my time. Because I kind of went live late today. All right. So I'm going to just keep filling this in. And I'm going to do white for this entire stencil. You can totally do do two different colors. You don't have to do, um, you know, all white or all the same color. You can do any color that you want. I just picked white because I thought that this color would pop off the darker tone of the brown and the orange and um, just kind of make it look, you know, a little bit more exciting, maybe a little bit more vibrant, give it a little pop but you could totally do something even darker. You could do a black. You could do whatever you want with this one. So let me get that finished up right here. And typically I recommend like doing more than one coat, um, which means two light coats are best than one heavy coat that actually um, 
leaks or bleeds through. Okay, especially if you're doing it with a stencil, you don't want it to bleed through. And I'll just kind of give you an example of that right here. You can see like where the Y is a little heavier than my A. That's upside down, but you get the idea. You kind of want to do several little light coats, then you do heavier coats. Um, that's just going to help it, again, keep it as crisp as possible and not have too, too, too much bleeding. So you don't have, um, you know, any schmeary looking design. I mean, you might want that look. And I know people that actually, once their design is done, they take um, some, like a piece of sandpaper and they sandpaper the design out, like they schmear it out or rub it out so that it actually has more of that rustic look to it. And you can totally do that, that's fine too. Um, it's totally up to you. All right, so I am getting to the end of that. And I have, I probably need to do a second coat here. Um, let me just see if I can do that real quick before I move on to the next cute little part. And I totally recommend like doing, like I said, multiple, multiple thinner layers of paint um, just to avoid bleeding. And I feel like I might have a little bit bleeding anyways right here just because I did do a heavier coat. Hopefully though, the Mod Podge saved me, so fingers crossed on that. So once it's like this, you've got your little stencil filled in, like you'll kind of want to, like I'm airing it out to dry a little bit. Give it like 10, 15 minutes to dry. Don't um, like peel it right away. And I'm gonna actually peel it in just a couple minutes here. Um, but I recommend like giving it a full like 15 minutes to totally dry. That way you have a better result. And so while I give that a minute to dry, what I'm gonna do is in my craft cabinet behind me, I'm going to get out um, some little embellishments for fall. And I don't even know what I have in here, guys, but I'm hoping something cute. <laughs> um, we will see. So let's see, I have some ribbon, and it'd be nice if I had like a little berry twig, but I don't think that I do. Um, from what I can see, I just have um, this little greenery. But I did recently purchase purchase from the Dollar Tree, I saw um, they have like these little garlands that have like some berries on them and they have them in green and white. They have them in a red color and they have them in an orange color. And how cute would like a green and white one look on this one? And I will show you in a minute with this, how I'm actually um, planning to do the berries. And I'll go back and add the berries because I can't seem to find them in my little stash around here, which is kind of how things just go, right? I mean, when you're crafting, you just can't seem to put it all where you meant to put it. Yeah, I totally have it in my other room where I was earlier. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead, get, now that I've given this a few minutes to um, dry, I'm going to peel it off. Marie says, can you blow dry it to speed it up? So you can blow dry this, before you put the stencil on. Once you put the stencil on, you it's all about the time and air. You cannot blow dry the stencil, um, the stencil material, because I don't know what's gonna happen to it. It may melt or I don't know. So I don't recommend blow drying it once you've laid down the stencil. You will actually want to give it time and let it just air dry. Um, that's the best case scenario, the best recommendation, okay? So, we've had a few minutes. I probably could do another coat of white just to make it pop off this a little bit more, but we're all watching and we all wanna see it, so we're gonna go ahead and peel this back, this little stencil, and again, I'm just peeling it very slowly, easy peasy, right, nice and easy. You like that, lemon squeezy? Um, and making sure that I just don't, you know, I don't force it. Just peeling it very slowly, 
and trying not to get any of it to like drape any other white paint through the design. And then once I get a section off, it will kind of tear. Then what you want to do is look how cute this is turning out. See that? Look how cute. But if you look really close, you see like the insides of the letters have a little piece still stuck in there. So you're going to use a little pick tool like this, like the little dental pick tools. You can get these at Harbor Freight. Um, or if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette machine, hopefully you have one already. Um, and you're just going to pick out the little insides of your letters right there. Just making sure that they have everything in there that you, um, you know, all the little bits out so that you can see the entire design, how it's supposed to be. Okay. And so look at that. Look how cute this is. Just like that. Okay. So we're not done yet though, right? What we're going to do now is we're going to take a pipe cleaner, an easy pipe cleaner. And I'm just going to, because this comes pre-drilled. Okay. I'm going to just feed it through the front about an inch, an inch and a half like this, um, maybe two inches, and I'm gonna fold it up, okay? And what I'm going to do is just kind of twist this little um, pipe cleaner down and around, like so, and just kind of pull that little piece down into the back. You can cut it off um, if you want. I don't know where my other scissors went. Oh, of course, they're all over there like that, okay? So now I've kind of just got the start of my little door hanger starting, and then it comes with these wood beads. Now these are natural um, wood beads. Let me just show you here. Got some runaways. But just so you know, it comes with them. You can totally paint these any color you want, or you can um, leave them natural. It's totally up to you. I kind of like the natural look with these, but um, you know, if you want to paint them orange, you could easily squirt some orange paint in the bowl, add a little bit of water in like a styrofoam bowl like this. This is how I paint them. Let me show you. I have one right here. You can put the paint in here with a little bit of water, drop your beads in, and then kind of swish it around. And that's like the fastest, easiest way to paint your beads without your hands getting all, you know, messy from like holding it and trying to paint it or you can thread them on another pipe cleaner and try to paint them that way and it takes longer to dry but i just found that rolling them in a little water bowl like this is really easy i i got that tip from another crafter diyer um i can't remember who right now but i once i tried it i was like yeah that's the way i'm painting beads from here on out but like i said i like the natural so i'm gonna do natural for these and it's about 13, I think it is, beads to go make a nice little hanging section on this. So that's what's included with the kit. You can certainly do longer or shorter. That's totally up to you. And it's real quick to just feed them onto the pipe cleaner. And this one may actually take a little less than 13. Let's see. 10. We might be at 13, 11, 12, yeah, we'll do, we'll do 12, I think. Yeah, we'll do 12. Sounds good, sounds good to me. I had a bigger one, I don't know where it went. Oh, it's right there. I like to end it with that one. All right, so then, look, see? So I've got my little beads like that, and I don't have much pipe cleaner left, so I've gotta be, you know, savvy about it. I'm gonna thread it through the front, and then just bring it up and there's just a little tail left and I'm just gonna twist this around my pipe cleaner. And you might need to use like your little scissors to make sure you get a good bend in that pipe cleaner because you don't want it to come undone um, on your board and you really just wanna get that wrapped to the back as best as possible. But now, now you have this little handle and you can bend it or shape it like you can make it to a point if you want or you can kind of like round it out. I kind of like it rounded out like I'm carrying a little purse. <laughs> How cute is that, right? Okay, so this is super adorable the way it is, but it needs some embellishment or something, right? So of course you're gonna need your glue gun and I'm gonna turn mine on. And you can totally use some ribbons 
and make a cute little bow with it. I always love to do that. Um, however you decide to do it is totally up to you. I have a lot of these like natural colored burlap ribbons and all I'm going to do is just make that easy bow where you just have different little um, pieces and you put them all together and you just make like kind of a messy bow. Um, and I'm just gonna cut two of each one like this and then just bring my ends together and make sure that I give it that inverted tail or that V by folding it in half and just doing that. So I'm gonna have two of those. And then I'm going to do two of these right here. And I'm just gonna get enough of this ribbon to do two like that as well. And I don't need that much, so I don't wanna waste it because I love this ribbon and I haven't used it a lot, but it's getting the end. And the ribbon that I use mostly, what I use is all um, wired edge ribbon. You can certainly do whatever ribbon you want, but I like to use the wired edge, wired edge ribbon because it just kind of gives it a little something extra. And then I'm going, it allows you to like bend it and keep it into place however you style it. Then I'm gonna do one of these. This is a Dollar Tree ribbon. So I kind of mix my ribbons. I do a high-end ribbon and then I do like a budget ribbon, a Dollar Tree one. So now I'm just kind of layering up my pieces of ribbon. And then I've got this cute, fun little orange gingham one from the Dollar Tree as well. And I'm just gonna put a couple pieces of that in here just to kind of give it, you know, something extra to kind of go with it, okay? And then you can use a pipe cleaner is what I like to do. I just kind of layer it all up, pinch it in the middle. like that and just kind of fold it in half and then back down like so. So I'm just holding it into my hand, just pinched in the middle, folding this little pipe cleaner around it to the back of it, pinching that up. And then I'm just gonna twist this into place, twist, twist, twist like that. And then I'm just going to basically just kind of fluff this out this one's a little long for me, so I'm gonna trim it. Let's see any other long ones? That one looks a little long, like that. And I've kind of got these fun little orange ones flopping around, so I'm gonna kind of angle those a different way. Let me angle those up. And then what's cool about this little bow is that you can, because I use the pipe cleaner, you don't have to hot glue it. You can totally um, tie it on with the pipe cleaner, right? So it's super easy. So here's my little thing. And let's see, so I've got the welcome y'all at the bottom right. So I think the bow coming off to the left is really cute. So I'm just going to attach that to this pipe cleaner back here and just twist it a couple times around, whoop, and then cut these little, um, these leftover tails off. And just kinda straighten this up. Now, another thing that you could do with this is put like a flower instead of a bow, if you wanna do that or add like a piece of green greenery, like the greenery I was talking about um, that they have at the Dollar Tree right now. How cute would it be to have like a flower here and like some greenery kind of like cascading downward on this little thing? Like that would be super adorable. But I kind of stuck with the orange and brown tones on this one, but I think it would be really pretty with like some red berries or something like that. But look how cute this turned out from this little kit that we have. Isn't that adorable? And now I'm gonna hang this right on the front board and batten section of my home, like where I have some hooks and just kind of have it there. And it just says, welcome y'all, like welcome fall, right? <laughs> but yeah, super adorable, right? 
And yes, Brittany, this is one of the, this is gonna be live, or it's gonna go up in the shop as a craft kit that you can order. It'll come with the round, the stencils, um, and the beads, okay? And two pipe cleaners so that you can tie on your beads. So it'll be super easy for you to do. The paint is not included on this one. Um, it's just the kit, the stencil, and the beads, okay? So how cute though is this? And it's super simple and easy to make and so much fun, right? Yeah?